Hi, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I wanted to go over all of the zodiacs and kind of my first impression, uh, the good and the bad, and decode it a little bit for you people. I did a little doodle on a paper <laughs> just so that I can have a bit of a reference guide just to translate to you. Uh, so we'll start with, uh, with the first sign, Aries. Okay? And it's a fire sign. Okay? And it goes cardinal, fixed, mutable, cardinal, fixed, mutable, and repeats. And it's also ruled by Mars. And with Mars, you have to remember that that's like the planet of war. Okay? And Aries is also the first sign. And it's a fire sign. So these will be people who are very, like, quick to act. Like, they will, they won't think about their actions before necessarily taking them like they'll kind of be headstrong and like just charging in to a situation um so the good and the bad for that so in romance and stuff they could be very like they could rush right into things and give things their all uh but at sometimes they might rush into things that they might have not necessarily rushed into had they thought about it uh taurus the next sign is fixed and fixed signs are no, known for being stubborn, uh, Taurus especially, because uh, it's an earth sign, and the earth signs are very like down to earth and about the physical material realm. And Taurus is also ruled, its ruling planet, uh, the previous was uh, Mars, the god of war, and now we're moving in to Venus, the god of love. So it's about beauty, creativity, and romance. So you can look at it from the positive and negative of that on either side because they can also be very lazy and uh, like well in the stubborn that doesn't only just mean in like their opinions but just in like they can be very grounded and like once you get them sitting on YouTube kind of thing they can be like glued or fixed because they're a fixed sign to a location. Um, then the, uh, the third sign, Gemini, I'll show you on the chart, it's ruled by Mercury, the god of communication and travel. And Gemini is also like the dual sign. It's the first dual sign, the twins, and represents, it's also, it's also an air sign, okay, because it goes, it goes, uh, Fire, earth, air, water. Fire, earth, air, water. Fire, earth, air, water. Fire, earth, air, water. It just repeats that pattern. And, uh, yeah, so it's ruled by communication, Mercury. And it's a mutable sign, which means that they, like, are able... It's, it's all about thinking. Like, they're able... It's uh, mind. And especially if, like, you have your moon in that location then it can amplify it or for example any of the pl any of the zodiacs that i mentioned if it's if it's if it's ruling planet like for example aries is ruled by mars well if in your natal chart mars was in wherever like your zodiac it's ruling planet that would just like amp up the qualities of it and uh yeah so gemini people can be kind of two-faced uh analytical and like, kind of childish because yeah, even though they're ruled by Mercury, uh, it's also the child zodiac. So they can have like a youthful appearance, a youthful demeanor, uh, and appear kind of childlike. Um, then the fourth one, uh, we're going to go into Cancer. And Cancer is the first zodiac that is ruled by the moon, the divine mother. And it's the most kind of emo of the zodiacs because it's linked to the moon which is the divine mother and it's not a bad thing and it's not a good thing it's just a thing and you can look at it from either perspective of good or bad because in this video i said i try to say the good traits and the bad traits so thinking of it that way well they can be very nurturing and motherly and emotional and kind and caring 
but on the adverse, if like you were to hurt one or they were upset, they could be really emotional and a crybaby and woe is me, just very like kind of self-centered in a in an emotional context. And uh, yeah, then we'll move on to Leo, which is ruled by the sun. And the sun is heliocentric. So everything revolves around the sun. And it's not necessarily Leo's fault to think this way. It's just kind of in their nature. And why wouldn't you fucking think that everything revolves around you? If it, this is your life, you perceive it from your eyes, and you all taking it in into your brain. And why wouldn't it be the most important thing for you, right? And uh, Leo is the, is the second fire sign. And it takes on, because Aries rules, like, the head, the, the Abram, like the, the, the crown chakra at the top here. Well, Leo rules the heart. So Leo is more of, it has that kind of taking charge energy that Aries has, but it's ruled by the sun, not Mars. So the energy is still fiery and intense, but it's more from a heart uh which means that they could also be very, they can be very emotional, much like uh, cancers can be, but it's more of like a, a prideful, lustful, heliocentric view of the world around them. So like the world is the stage and their center of it. So even in like relationships, even though like they might put you first or put you on a pedestal, if you're like out and about, they still have to be number one. And if you try to, like, take their, like, center stage, they will not like that. <laughs> um, then moving on to Virgo. Um, Virgo is the next Earth sign, uh, next from Taurus, and it's a mutable sign, and it's ruled by Mercury. Uh, Mercury, the god of communication and travel, is more at home in Virgo because Virgo is the second of the earth signs and its energy is a little more mature so because in Mer when we have Mercury in Gemini it's more childish and when we have it in Virgo it's more analytical and more even though they're both about thought and like mind processes uh, Gemini can tend to be about lower minded ego stuff that isn't as important where Virgo tries to, because they're the harvest, they take all the thoughts and consideration in, and then they weed out what is relevant. And that's very much in Virgo way. And, yeah. Um, then we're going into, after September, when we go into um, Libra, show you in the chart because because the wheel is denoted as from time as you can see because we have the solstice and the and the equinoxes on the four parts of the wheel and so with libras they are they're ruled by venus as well but it's kind of like almost like the dark side because as where is with taurus the the loving energy is more of like romance with Libra it's a little more analytical and more of like that party energy where like you're a social butterfly but it doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to be like the romancy to be just like with a one-on-one -on -one partner like they might have a the that might that those views might almost seem like chaining them down where they might never want to get married where like Taurus people would tend to be a little more old-fashioned in their um, beliefs of that of that nature um, and Libra is the balance um, it's an air sign so it's also about the mind and like higher thinking and they can be very logical and indecisive because because they're all about weighing things out it might take them freaking forever to make a decision um, yeah, I'm going to speed it up a bit because I only got like five more minutes. Um, Scorpio is ruled by Mars. And it's 
a water sign. They're very emotional, but they are very secretive, meaning that they might want to know all your secrets, but the moment you reverse the situation around on them, they're going to be like, whoa, that is too personal. Why are you asking me that? It's inappropriate, even though I just asked you that exact same question 30 seconds ago. Um, they can also be very loyal when in love, uh, but keep in mind they're the scorpion, so they have that stinger. Um, Sagittarius is the last of the fire signs, uh, because that's when we get into the coldest of winter on December 21st. And that's, and then when, at the end of December 21st, when, so December 22nd, 23rd, then we're in Capricorn. And that represents like the coldest part of the year. And we move from the last fire sign, which spiritually speaking, it tends to be like the weakest just because a lot of the symbols, if they're the, if they are the last of the, of the, of the, what is it called? Of the trigon, uh, there's a sacred trigon and cause there's, you know, three times four, uh, and the three element and the four elements. So, um, if it's the last of the element or energy burst in the zodiac, then it tends to be a little more on the physical realm. But, like, in a really good way, it can actually seem like in the physical realm, they do the best because they have the physical realm mastered. But they might have a lacking of spiritual understanding because uh, they are known for, it's the centaur. Uh, talk about Sagittarius, the archer with the arrow. But it's the last of the fire, and then we go into the cold of the winter. And Capricorn uh, is like, in astrological speaking, it's like Satan, because it's actually ruled by Saturn, which is Saturday, which is like the Saturnalia, which is like Satan. And yeah, these people can be a little sharp. Um, I've known quite a few Capricorns, and they can be a little um, sharp very very loyal to their friends but because and they rule the bones okay because yeah and you have to remember that um, with Saturn being the ruling planet time and like higher knowledge as well as life lessons so these signs will also get uh, kind of the most trials and tribulations throughout life because they're in like the coldest element of the zodiac but with the most trials and tribulations comes some of the greatest rewards in the physical plane because they work hard and they achieve great things due to their efforts. And then we'll go into Aquarius, the water bearer. And even though it's the water bearer, I would like to point out that it is an air sign because it's a man holding water, dumping it out. And that reference of like dumping out the water kind of represents that the Aquarius is kind of like um, they're very giving people and they're very loving but on a negative aspect they love everybody so it doesn't mean that they love you more than anybody else it just means they love you like you know what I mean because you live on the planet earth like they love everything on the planet earth like even a caterpillar and a mosquito so you know, they're, they can be a little uh, hard to be discriminating with people, especially when it comes to their heart, because their heart doesn't really have that filter. It's, uh, they can be a little logical in their thinking, and almost taboo and like esoteric, and almost like rebellious in their nature. And very intelligent. There are also a lot of them are geniuses. Uh, and then I'd like to move on to the final one because I only got a little bit of time. It is Pisces and it's the uh, water sign and it's the fishes swimming in opposite directions. And these people can be very dreamy and romantic but also very wishy-washy because it's the fish swimming in opposite directions. And yeah, uh, I hope this video has been informative and Love you guys, and thank you for watching. Subscribe and like this, and watch my other ones. Mwah! Bye!